Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing another one. A uh, different supplier. I'm just hitting all these guys, I guess. Um, but I think it's a good one. I think it's uh, like the original one we did. Uh, I'll leave a link below in the description. This is another 2170 pack. We just did the um, 12 amp hour. This is a little bit smaller. This is only a 10 cell. M18, 2170, 21700, 10 cell. <clears throat> so there's only two, two of these. And again, we got the Samsung 2170 40Ts. These were like 35 amp units. And I'll leave a link to the description below. I think I paid 460 for these each. This is a small, the lowest price I could find online. And uh, it was on a website. I'll pop a screenshot up here i can't even pronounce the name <clears throat> so let's uh let's get this one unboxed and see what we got all right just for size comparison here's our 12 amp hour we just did um yesterday actually it was yesterday and this is the 10 amp hour obviously that's 15 cells and this is only going to be 10, so it's a, you know, a little bit shorter. It's going to be a lot lighter. Right, let's get this one opened up and see what we got. Coolest thing is it's got a lightning bolt on it. This one does not. Um, one of the things that you really need to look out for when you're, and I know it's hard to do, but the, uh, the tension on these connectors is critical. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, and I don't have it here with me, is the one I got off Amazon that I rides on that I didn't like. The the pin tension or the the connector tension is garbage on that thing. I'm gonna end up taking that battery back apart and just throwing the case away. Um, it's just it's so light. There's like no grip force whatsoever on those pins. This one's like nice and snug. This this one I just did a. I just used a little micro flathead and inserted it. It's, it's the same as this one. It's nice and snug, but that one off Amazon is that I got. Oh, I'll link that one below. Is garbage. The the that's a good way to burn your tool up with bad pin tension. You won't get a good contact. Um, enough jabbering. Let's get this open. All right, we're back. There's the case contents. You've got the the top, the bottom, the locks, the springs, screws. Obviously, there's a lot of less screws on these than there are for the other type of cases. Got the stickers. This is the locker locking hold down piece. BMS, your tins for your batteries, and the cell holder. This is um. This is similar, obviously it's for 2170, but this is similar to the one that was on Amazon that I wasn't too thrilled about. Um, this one's a lot thicker. The plastic is not as flimsy. I don't like that you don't have any way to hold down to the bottom of the case. This one does have ribs in the bottom of the case. So I see the little tits sticking up right there, four of them. So that does hold the cells, you know, from you know, going this way, moving around. Just, I'm just more of a fan of the batteries attaching or the, the cell holder attaching into the case. I don't know, just personal preference. Probably quit belly aching about it. Um, the other thing, BMS. <clears throat> this one's different than the first one I did. It actually has the tabs for the negative and the positive made onto the BMS. Um, the first first one we did, the there were two holes in the in the circuit board for for you to put like these short little pieces of wire through and connect. So there was soldering onto the board and stuff you had to do. This one's got uh, weldable tabs, which 
they're pretty thick so I don't, my welder I did one that last one we did it it tacked it but it didn't I don't think it made a good contact and I can't personally my personal gripe is I can't stand when they put these little tits I mean I know why but they do it so you can put your electrodes in there and weld it right there but if you if your electrodes don't fit between in those two holes they don't it doesn't make good contact obviously your this is raised off of whatever you're doing by the, the thickness of those little divots so it's hard to get a good contact when you're welding when you have something that's picking your two pieces up off of each other a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take a pair of needle nose and I'll come in here and just I'll squish them back down flat. But, yep, we got the springs. So that's the whole contents. I'll bring you back when I get the cells in and I start soldering these all together. <clears throat> Interesting note. I didn't get any anything on this one like I did for the this is from the other one the 15 cell um, oops, you know talking about solder bridges and stuff like that make sure you do it in a specific order this is very similar to the other board that we did on the 18650 15 cell so yeah interesting it doesn't say anything about i don't see anything about doing it a specific way you just got your b1 b2 b3 b4 <clears throat> so no yeah, all right let's get started all right we're back i uh, just have everything kind of mocked up there's no cells in here whatsoever um a couple things i noticed while doing all this is the there's no mica strips available. I think I have some I'll use, but the issue is, is when you, if you try to solder this joint or the other one on the other side, you are literally right on top of, sorry, right on top of the plastic right here. This, this piece right here runs right underneath there and you're going to melt it. Um, the other thing, kind of funny, all these tabs, they all have these locating holes, but there's no tits to, you know, locate these things. You can see, obviously, this one's drooping. They're all in. I mean, I was more of a fan of this one before I stuck it together. Now I'm like, meh. Same thing over there. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, it's right, you know, I'm going to try to spot weld this, but I'll probably end up putting a little dab of solder as backup. That's it right now. I got to uh, secure this down, put the two screws or one screw. Huh. I have the two screws for the... Oops. For the body, and one screw left here. There's, there's one screw hole there, but there's also one right there. I'll have to see if there's a corresponding one underneath there. That's not very good. Because if you don't have one for, if you don't have one for this side, and you only lock that in, this is where all the force is going in and out. You're jamming it in and out, and that'll actually, I'd imagine, flex this board up and down. Hmm. This one looks like a hodgepodge, like a company bought these, and they bought these case holders, and they bought these and kind of threw it all together because there's no locating pins for these locating holes. It doesn't seem like it 
it's cohesive. It just seems like it's parts put together. Uh, it's okay. It's not a, I wouldn't call it a great kit. It just doesn't seem like parts were thought through very much. All right. Let's get the cells loaded, get this fixed down, start putting these things on here. Okay, so we're back. We got everything spot welded. All the way across. Holy crap. I forgot two of them. Stand by. Alright. Glad you guys saw that. So they're all done now. Now. Got our taps all soldered. Got our one screw in the board. There is a hole here and there's a place to put a screw in, but they didn't include it. That's all I got left. And I've looked and looked and there, there was just not another one in there. Anyway, I did spot weld it, but I wasn't too happy with how it went. So I did dab it. Again, my biggest gripe with this style is there's no fuse built into this and I could have made one by notching this in but I'll just let it run the way it is don't like it so if you're going to look for these look for the ones that have on the positive tab that have a step down you know between the battery and the connector you know make sure it next down there's like an H here where it's a thinner piece of wire that's your fuse that's going to protect you if you dead short these um, or overdraw it with the with your uh, tool um, but yeah this one's at 17 point something volts so right now it's only got one uh, one light I got to charge it and uh, I'm gonna throw it in the case bolt it up put on the stickers and I'll bring you back when that's done Alrighty, there we go. We're all done. All stickered up and ready to go. I do like this one. You can view the this one. You can view the light from any angle. I think on this one, I was telling you that it's fully charged. See how you can't hardly you can hardly see the the LEDs unless you go like this. And it's not just the light. I'll kill the lights. I think we covered that in this in this other video. It shows up better on camera than it does in person. You, if you're in person, you have to view it like this from on top. Um, yeah, if it's just sitting on the sitting on the desk like this and you press the button, it's very hard to see it, especially if there's any light in the room. You can tell. Anyway, back to the one we just did. Sorry, I'm kind of doing a vlog style with this one. No camera mount or anything like that. So, yeah, like I said, this one's all ready to go. The only thing I do not like about it I don't know if it picks it up on camera, but I don't like the fact that the batteries rattle around in there. That's my, the clicking you hear is my fan hitting the, that's the difference when you screw the internal pack down versus you just let it float. Anyway, gripe. I mean, like when you're rolling around, the, the reason it gripes me, I don't like it, is these are going to take a lot of abuse if you're using them, especially if you're like a contractor. Can you imagine a contractor with a battery that wobbles around inside the, I mean, how many times are you going to do that? Or, you know, drop it or use it with a multi-tool where it's shaking 
at high frequency. So yeah, I don't like it. I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, obviously I'm not a contractor. I'm not somebody who's gonna be using this every day. So it's basically like hobby grade, I suppose. Um, all in all, not bad. I don't like the fuse, lack of fuse. I don't like the lack of mica. Um, so you can make your solder connections and it protects the battery from heat if the fuse blew. Oh, what else? Obviously I don't like the fact that it doesn't screw down the internal structure. Um, other than that, it's pretty easy, pretty good. So that's it. We're gonna charge this up. Uh, matter of fact, we'll go ahead and throw it on here. That is a old dirty charger. We are charging. You see that red light's on. We're going. So, yeah, this is an older charger. I think it only does two amps. Uh, three amps. It says DC output. Yeah, it took a long time to charge that thing. Um, because you know it's a 12 amp hour pack, even at three amps. That's three amp hours per hour. So, you know, it could take up to four hours to charge this thing. And it did. It took, it, it registered halfway, but it took a good two and a half, almost three hours to charge this last night. And the charger was working. It got hot. I mean, I, I actually unplugged the battery from it and let the charger cool down for an hour. Um while we ate dinner and because it was getting I mean it was like nuclear hot probably not the best charger to use to charge that up because you know it's used to the old two amp hour three amp hour packs you know where it would only take an hour and this thing would be humming with that one it's gonna be humming for you know if you kill it three or four hours um, probably get one with a fan or a higher output for the bigger batteries but thanks for watching Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it helped you out. Uh, just remember this is not a how-to, it's a how I do it. Um, so just wanted to give you, like I said, all the links and stuff for this pack and anything else I mentioned will be down in the description below. Thanks for watching.